Greetings dear friends, I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Audi A3 8P. The good quality of the body paintings allow you to keep the car even in a difficult climate like the ultra humid one in the St. Petersburg. Just do not be fooled about galvanizing, the body rusts perfectly if you run chips and on cars operating in Russia from birth, corrosion can long ago take a liking on the edges of the arches, the contact points of the wings and bumpers, as well as the bottoms of the doors. Do not cut on the mess of galvanizing touch-up damaged elements in time. The bottom and load bearing elements as a whole are well protected from corrosion. The seams of the side members and the bottom corrode only on machines that have been operated in very harsh conditions or after serious accidents. Weak door seals and sagging doors are the scourge of three-door cars. A loose fit of the rear door and the accompanying bottle in the trunk are also found on five doors. You need to regularly change the seal and adjust the lock every few years. At the same time, the door will not pump on irregularities and there is less chance that corrosion will appear on it. The salon here is not very luxurious, but it is reliable and comfortable. However, family ties with inexpensive goals and Octavias affect the quality of some elements. After hundreds of thousands of mileage, you can count on wear and tear of the lens of the heater mofru. It can start whistling or just get up sometimes to rest. Driverhood wiring often fails the test of time. Despite the high complexity of the onboard electrics, you cannot expect any special problems. The most serious thing that threatens the A4 owner is trouble with the ABS control module. The most advanced versions were installed here, and they fail much more often than on simpler car. Moreover, many are flashing blocks to support ESP and the Hill Start Assistant. For a DSJ, this is an important option. And the result of the firmware can be both minor failures and a complete failure over time. The repair is not very cheap. The price of the new unit is under 100,000. Fortunately, you can find a compatible one. Fill in if required firmware and. The price of such a solution is already about 18 20,000 rubles, which is quite tolerable. Failures of the climate system and, in general, glitches of electronics are typical for cars, but usually go away on their own. Less often, they require the use of a dealer scanner, advanced versions of VAG COM, or VASI diagnostician. Complete failure of the electrics is rare, perhaps due to a short circuit in the cabin fuse module, fuzz module, and burnout of the cracks. Often the users themselves are to blame, but the unit is weak on all machines with a PQ35 platform. You just need to take into account this development of events for any inventions, interventions in the electrical system. And like its platform counterparts, for some reason there were relatively often problems with the generator on machines with 1.8 and 2.0 EA888. Perhaps the peculiarities of aerodynamics effect. Most often the problems lie in the early wear of the burge assembly, less often in the burnout of the rectifier, or maybe there isn't at the high load. The amount of additional equipment is large, and the generators in the early years of production are only 90, 110 amperes. On cars with the VR6 engine and on some 2.0 TSIs, the battery has been moved to the trunk. Such cars are characterized by difficult starting in cold weather and a tendency to discharge the battery in winter. What is the reason? The location of the battery in a cold box outside the body or the lawn and relatively thin started power cable is not known for certain. Again, it is recommended to very carefully monitor the condition of the wiring of the electronic power steering. The slice doubts about the integrity of the pads of traces of burning should be eliminated immediately. Larger currents can cause a fire in the circuit, which is almost never de-energized while driving. On all-wheel drive cars, the wiring of the Holdex clutch is often criticized. It is located under the bottom and can be damaged if tip puddles are forced. Suspension resource only depends on driving style and equipment. Cars with not the most powerful engines 1.4 and 1.6 and on rubber with a disc diameter of 16-17 inches can usually go 18-120,000 km before serious interference in the suspension. The first as a rule are the rear bushings from the front levers, pillar supports and the lower bushings of the main arm in the rear suspension. For cars with sport suspension, powerful motors and duct tape instead of rubber for a run of 60-80 thousand, the front levers, struts and shock absorbers are usually replaced. At the rear, the suspension moves completely. We can assume that the overall reliability of the suspensions is more than decent. Just an image, you know. The brakes do not have any serious features, their source is sufficient, even on the S versions, the components are relatively inexpensive. Sometimes the anti-lock braking system fails, but this is more of an electronic problem. The steering again is no surprises. The reliable electronic power steering on all versions works perfectly. If it is not overloaded by rotating in place or white fields and monitored for proper wiring. Unfortunately, the components of the system are expensive to repair, which is sometimes required and the rack for wheel drive cars is less common and more expensive than the front wheel drive. 
Manual transmissions are not bad here, except that the dual mass flywheel is expensive, doesn't run for long on cars with 1.8 2.0 TSI engines. The drives are also not fragile, and even the four wheel drive components are reliable. Both the bevel gear and the rear. The Holdex clutch in the rear wheel drive on the Quadro versions was here before the restyling of the second generation in 2008. And after the restyling on the powerful versions, there is a Holdex 4. The difference is not only in the numbers. Holdex 2 is exactly a plug in all wheel drive, the lock is triggered when there is a difference in the speed of rotation of the wheels of the front and rear axles. The handling with such a drive is not very good. The rear axle can be pulled off at the most in inopportune moment. And the cross country ability is not impressive. The front wheels have time to dig in before the rear wheels begin to roll. On the other hand, the clutch is not very prone to overheating during normal driving and can easily be dispensed with by changing the oil, about 2000 rubles per liter, every 60,000 km or even less often. By the way, for this clutch there are turning control units that allows you to fine-tune the operating nodes. The Holdex 4 clutch is a completely different matter. It locks in advance, can work with a partial lock and closely interacts with the onboard electronics. A car with such a four-wheel drive is an order of magnitude better controlled. There is an excellent trajectory control in corners and good handling, but the reliability and the resource suffer. In addition to the obvious failures due to purely electronic failure when interacting with ECU and ABS control units, the resource of the clutch mechanics itself is also reduced, and especially the resource of its electric pump. To keep the four-wheel drive, you need to change the frankly expensive oil at least once every 10-20 thousand kilometers if you like to burn and the engine on the car is powerful. If you buy a used car, chances are good that the quadro will no longer work here, and the restoration cost will be from 50 to 200,000 rubles. By the way, many owners in the USA fill the clutch with the usual Dectron 4 instead of the native high tech oil, and nothing breaks. The main thing here is not to brand of oil, but the frequency of replacement, as often as possible, as you already understood. But in short, this is the real problem for A3 owners. Powerful engines and abundance of complete sets with automatic transmission, many options with DSJ6. All this raises massive criticism. Most of all the troubles with the DQ200, a 7-speed DSJ, because cars with this gearbox have been produced since 2006. And a lot of them have been produced. It is difficult to find owners who will cheerfully report that there were no problems with the gearbox. Almost all of them, with an obvious negative, talk about frequent clutch replacement and repairs of the automatic transmission itself. And the DQ250 also runs less here than on quieter cars. Again, remember the car image. The most reliable option is the good old ICNT F60 and S Volkswagen O9G, a hydraulic automatic machine which was installed in Europe with 1.6 and 2.0 FSI engines, and cars for the US market with engines up 2.0 TSI inclusive. The hydraulic machine also has its own problems with its resource, with overheating and so on, but in general it almost guarantees 150,000 km without any problems. And if you change the oil more often, every 30-40,000 and put in addition external cooling, then most likely 250 and even 300,000 will pass. Until 2009, a uniquely reliable by modern standards 1.6 engine with an 8-12 cylinder head and distributed injection was produced. The series of motors here are BGU, BSE, BSF, Double CS, but in fact they are one and the same engine. Now, by the way, it can be found under the hood of many Chinese Volkswagen. In the Middle Kingdom, they also value durability and simplicity. Volkswagen's first experience with the modernization of the EA Triple One series of engines, with the timing chain drive and direct injection in the face of 1.6 FSI engine, was frankly unsuccessful. Hard work, problematic fuel equipment. You can of course dodge, put injectors from new engines and through an adapter, a high-pressure pump from fresh DFSI, but it is much easier to refuse such a dubious purchase. The dynamics of the car with it no better than with a simple 1.6 MPI and the fuel consumption is no less. In addition, like all EA Triple R1 module Triple One motors, it has an unreliable timing chain assembly, as well as problems familiar from the later AE Triple One 1.6 MPI CFNA with piston group knocking and early wear of the crankshaft blinders. The larger 2.0 FSI EA113 series, AXW, BLR, BLX are also not very encouraging to the owners. Everyone has problems with the piston group and the injection equipment is disappointing. Motors start very poorly at sub-zero temperatures and the injection pump is very vulnerable. Moreover, there is a constant oil burner because of which the chances of overheating of the valves are sharply increased due to the growth of the fork cut from carbon deposits. 
True, this engine is a good option for converting into the legendary AWX, BPY, BWA, CAWB, BHZ, CDLA, 2.0 TFSI EA113 of the first generation, which was installed not only on A3, but also on the Golf 6R and on the Octavia RS before styling, where such motors have earned the fame of the excellent option for tuning. One of the top VR6 3.2 motors of the AXZ BDB BMJ BUB series is a development of old row space units. The unique arrangement with two rows of cylinders in a common block and with a common cylinder head is not only compact but also very high in weight, and also an unsuccessful timing mechanism prone to chain slip and a slice wear. And in general, the motor is quite capricious and moreover heavy. With it, the resource of the front suspension drops at times and the handling deteriorates noticeably. No wonder it was possibly replaced by a powerful 2.0 supercharged. Many cars are equipped with turbocharged 1.2 and 1.4 TSI engines EA111. At first glance, there were excellent engines, 1.4 seems especially attractive for a small car, economical and powerful. But alas, there is a surprisingly low resource of the timing chain, a tendency to sleep when worn with bent wheels. The injection of equipment is already quite reliable, which cannot be said about 1.6. 1.4 TSI passing group. With the slice problems with supercharging, it fails. And there can be many reasons. Failure of the liquid intercooler due to contamination of the radiators or failure of the electric pump. A decrease in the performance of one of the nozzles or simply cocking of the rings and overheating of the piston. There are many reasons, but the result is one. Replacement of pistons or a sh shot block assembly. The 1.2 engine is slightly stronger. There is an 8 valve well cylinder head and a more durable piston cylinder, but it is also prone to cocking and the chain resource is even lower. But the engines EA888 Gen 1 with a volume of 1.8 and 2.0 look more confident against the background of more compact relatives. Messenger is also characteristic of them. There was a very uh, avant-garde piston design which they couldn't bring to mind, but the timing chain is at least capable of going all 120-150 thousand kilometers. The preservation system is also less capricious here. The intercooler is ordinary air to air. There are also enough minor problems with phase shifters and high pressure fuel pumps, especially on engines of early releases. But the asset has a good post margin and the ability to deliver more reliable tuning pistons, or the standard from more recent Gen 2 Gen 3 engines. If you do not forget to add oil if necessary and choose it correctly, then it is quite possible that such a motor will not cause much trouble, at least until the timing is replaced. On this information, both the problems of the Audi A3 8P is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.